I must be the craziest woman on the in the world because it is not only Friday the 13th, but I have agreed to co-host with my husband. <laughs> Frank Gifford's here, everybody, because Hoda's on a much needed, much deserved one day vacation. So Frank Gifford is in the house, baby. You know Hall how of long fame, I've been away from television? Well, how old are you to begin with? Well, Just really kidding. How long have you been away I, from television? <laughs> every day I listen to you tell everyone how old I am. Only because you're so gorgeous. I wouldn't make fun of you if you if we're doddering and 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 sickly. Yeah, you're hardly. Yeah, but I into the service station and the guy said, "You got to be kidding." What? What? About things you're how old? Well, and because nobody with believes it. it when they look at you, honey. But I'm 78 years old. 78 <laughs> years old and looking awesome. And I feel really well. I know, and you no, know, it, it, you, you are a model for other people out there hoping to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> because mean. honestly, I tell them all the time, I had no idea you'd live this long, right? <laughs> oh, boy. It's, it's, it's like this all the time, by the way. We, we just, <laughs> living in a funny house. We got married uh, almost 23 years ago, and it's, some would say, miraculous that we're Still married and still talking and laughing. I, I don't think we've ever, I don't think we've ever had a quarrel, have we? <laughs> Here's the funny thing. Kids, there's a new, new study out. Says that kids of older dads may have a lower IQ. Uh, now, I didn't even meet you until I was older and you were older. You'd been married before, I'd been married before. It's only a little bit. It's minuscule. Well, it, but the point of it is, you were 53 when we got married. I was, what was I? I was, no, well, I forget. I was 53 when, when we met. You got. We were. Fit, you were 56 when we got married. I was uh, 20, and um, <laughs> we proceeded to have two children. You were 60, I think, when you had codes, and 63 when we had Cass, right? And both of them have uh, done extraordinarily I well know, academically. But this point this out. this thing says well, that, that tells you about that the study. You the study says studies. that our kids should be dumb as dirt. <laughs> is basically what it well, says. Well, they are not. And <laughs> I, and here's the reason. It's because your sperm has mutated. Well, that's why I got to I, I mutated sperm. What do you want me to do? I'm, just, I'm no. here. Oh. I'm here with my football. Older men have mutated sperm. Well, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> what, does a, what does a study have to do? Does it say anything I about older women? For many years we and talked. younger men? No, it doesn't say that. They've talked well, about for years how men are able to have children up until you're like Methuselah age, you know, and women basically um, have a, a, a window of opportunity, shall we say, although with modern technology, women's window is getting larger. It's a, it's a, it's a wide massive. screen. It's no massive. Words, yes. Right, right, right. Anyway, uh, I thought I, that I, was interesting. I, this was not in the notes. Yes, it was. It now, was. let me tell you something about Frank. We come in here this morning, and we had a production meeting. For about a half an hour, our Is producers, that what that that's what that was. The, our producer and, and several of our, our, like three of our producers come up. Remember we were getting our hair and makeup done? That was a production meeting. My hair. Apparently Frank, I wish my hair looked like this. Apparently Frank <laughs> didn't realize it because we got downstairs to the dressing room. All of a sudden he's reading his notes goes and starts laughing at stuff he heard an hour before. It is, that's what we're I mean, doing. I, I thought they were, seriously, I thought they were talking to you. I really was not paying attention. <laughs> Well, why don't you don't think you have a purpose here well, today, other than being? I, I, we've done this before candy? many times. You know, years ago, and you used to do their, your own show with Regis. And yes. I would and Regis would get sick or something. I'd pop in and I'd just sit there. So I just <laughs> here I am. I'm sitting here. <laughs> and you're doing it magnificently, you, sweetheart. You really. Are. Okay, here's the deal. First person on our Facebook to write in and say, Frank Gifford, Hall of Fame gets a signed football sent to you. So, right? Frank Gifford, Hall of Fame. And, and let us know your name, and Frank will sign yeah, it we'll to you. Put and the name be on there and everything. And it's a, oh, it's a real football. Gosh. I am so nervous today. I miss Hoda. I really do. I, I love Frank Gifford with all my heart. But, you, you know, you take... I wouldn't want to be married to Hoda. I like being married to you. But there's something about worrying about... I'm worried about us. Why is that, hon? Well, years ago, we hosted the... the uh, remember when we hosted the... The uh, Olympics oh. together? One other time we hosted, yes. It was the Calgary Olympics. Uh, Rune Arledge, uh, the late Rune Arledge and a great friend, had a, this wonderful idea to put Frank and Kathy together. Uh, we actually were early on in our relationship. We were just newly married. Mm. And Tom Shales, the esteemed uh, <laughs> Washington Post uh, uh, critic. critic, yes, basically called us like said, yeah. they are two marshmallows sitting by the fire. 
<laughs> now he's probably going to write two ger geriatric Ken and Barbie sitting there, you uh, well, know? Now he's more like a marshmallow than we are. Though. Oh, Frank Gifford! <laughs> there Look you how go. we've there, survived. Here we still are, okay. Here's the Hi, thing. Hi, Tom. Take there's, care. There's a guy in, in England, you might want to th consider this, has put his wife up for sale. I, I, yeah. read, I read that. Yeah, but not an hour later, you read it <laughs> after you were told about it. The that, guy is, that is kind of astonishing, though, isn't it? That you can actually put your wife up for sale. She didn't, she didn't, she He's didn't know. He's a builder in England, and he put her up anonymously in this trade magazine because she was bothering him about chores, just nagging, nagging, nagging. His name is Gary Bates. He described his wife, Donna, in the ad as, nagging wife, no tax, very high maintenance, <laughs> some rust. I love that. He showed his wife who thought it was hysterical until he told her that it she was, did not she know was the it one was he was talking yeah. about. So apparently they received nine or ten calls regarding the sale of the man's wife. Would you ever sell me any? Oh, my darling, of course not. Of course, <laughs> we'll be taking offers. <laughs> Your son might. My son, is he made it here? He's, uh, everybody keeps asking why, Frank, and I, I take off as much as I do, and it it's li literally comes down to one thing, and that's our kids. We have a lot of fun about it, but our kids are everything in the world to us, and this is the one week coming up next week where Cody's spring break and Cassidy's spring break um, over to overlap, and so we're going to be heading off next week to places unknown. Hoda is on a beach someplace right now, soaking it in. We can't say where she is. No, no she'll no. tell everybody about it on, on, give her a little privacy, poor woman. She literally has not taken um, maybe three days off the entire year, so. I have to say, when I first met Hoda, the first two or three minutes of it, I said, oh, how's this going to work? Why? What do you, what do you say? so different. We are. Five minutes later, she really came into our lives. Isn't she's she amazing? A, she's an extraordinary woman, and, and uh, I think most of the people share that same feeling. But she is, she is so much fun. She's so bright. She's so quick. A uh, very special lady. Yeah, she really is sweet. She is. All righty. Um, what about Michael Phelps? Still feel the same way about Michael Phelps? Uh, I have always felt uh, sad for Michael Phelps. Mm -hmm. All the unbelievable accomplishments, the eight gold medals, and... Just in that one Olympics. A little stupid mistake. On and the heels of another stupid but, I mean, mistake. It, it sends a message, and if you could ever send a message to the young people out there in this country today, Michael Phelps is that message. When you achieve a certain stardom, a certain level of accomplishment, you are going to be tried on every issue. Yeah. And you better believe it going in. And coaches ought to be aware of this at every level, starting in grade school through high school. They have an extraordinary athlete. Teach them. They have to follow they the rules. They think it's never going to happen to them, though, sweetie, right? They just never well, they do. They never do. I and mean, that's the same kind of an attitude, the same kind of courage and guts or whatever you want to call it that makes him a champion. Well, it's interesting with his conversation with, um, with Matt because he and did not great. admit. Matt's a great interview. He did not admit that he was actually smoking marijuana. <clears throat> and people are saying, well, then maybe he's not sorry. Maybe and No, I think it's a technical thing. I think if he admits it, then their charges can be brought against him. Well, so maybe all he's that, saying is I made a mistake. I think he's saying... <clears throat> he said to Matt, I, we, we all know what we're talking about here, but he, was, he cannot technically say I was smoking pot yeah. because then uh, uh, South Carolina, I think, is well, where it happened. Technicality, we saw him doing it. Anyway, it's unfortunate for all the kids there who, again, who... I think get it out there, get it over with, and move on. Yeah. And it's hard to do in, with the, in the world of media today. You're the comeback guy of the whole world, though. Remember when Chuck Bed Bednarik, we see that picture all the time. When, when what, I know, <clears throat> everybody remembers that famous picture when Frank's just yeah, out like that. hit him harder, I'd have killed him. Right. But after you left for a year with a horrendous concussion, you were in a coma for a while, right? I wasn't in a coma. I was, uh, I was unconscious for a while, but Isn't that called I a took coma? a year off uh, because I had played nine years already and I wanted to uh, move on to something else. Well, they called it, you know, the, the end of Frank <clears throat> Gifford. He came back, can I brag a little bit about you? Comeback player of the year the next year and played for how many more years? I played three more years. And how many more positions? Did you uh, go to the Pro Bowl in how many positions? Hmm? I went to the Pro Bowl in three positions. Mm -hmm. How many times? Because the Giants needed players in different times? positions. How many times to the Pro Bowl? <laughs> Eight times. Thank you. Okay. So, we, what we wish for Michael Phelps is he comes though. back to the London Olympics and wins eight more and, and with no incidents off, out of the pool. Right? I really hope it happens. It's going to be so tough. At yeah. a certain age, you have to... I, I don't know whether you can even do it or not. We you're competing with these young kids that are coming up. The young Michael Phelps are just developing. They're going to compete in the London Olympics and, right and now. And he will be at his peak by the time he's peak right. Peak or beyond Because you peak. Are, Didn't it, you always tell me you think an athlete, when they're 28, that's the peak? Uh, 26 of, to 30, that's the best. Really? 
And the, and the, well, I'm talking mostly I got football. you later in life. You're telling me that I have never seen your peak? Well, we're talking about other... <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have lived with my peak. <laughs> There will be hell to pay. <laughs> Speaking of that, one more thing. Frank has been through menopause with three different wives, but he never had something like this to help him. A his and hers PMS calendar, which is designed is for men and women to discuss PMS, which is premenstrual syndrome. I've never seen your peak, huh? I, well, I didn't know there was such mm. a thing. Mm. Anyway. There's little charts here and everything. Yes, you, yes. This will tell you, if you know your woman's cycle, how mm -hmm. she feels, where she feels, what to expect. And, uh, you, you know, we, we could have used this back in the day. <laughs> I have a new book coming out. It's over here. Called so, uh, Just sample. When I Thought I Dropped My Last Egg. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, where was this when we needed it, you know? Anyway, I guess that's available from somebody. I, I'm Can afraid you to go to you, going in Sarah. and ask for a book? It's a book by Kathy Lee. Yes. Something about dropping your last egg. That's right. Well, what does that do? What, what does that tell me? And I, here's, the, here's the title of the next one. Life is a big, fat smorgasbord, unless you're already bloated. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that one. Sarah, <laughs> what are the folks saying other than please go away for a week? No, they, they're loving Frank. Let's just say that. Um, we, and we can congratulate Heather Zimmerman. She is the recipient of the football. Good. She was so the Frank first one. Why don't you sign that to Heather, honey? Heather. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not even going to ask how you spell it. You know. This. However, <laughs> phonetically is fine. Um, <laughs> Aunt Alina wrote in and said something like, um, "She's looking forward to the show, but is Frank famous or something?" Are Alan, you no, wait, kidding me? Oh. Me, the next oh. post is funny. Oh. Alan writes in, "I can't believe there's someone who does not know who Frank Gifford is." <laughs> See. But th th well, how old is how old is she? She's a girl and she looks young. She's like 18, maybe. Yeah. See, what people don't realize that but, you were, played football all those years, then you went on to 27 years as the host of Monday Night Football. You'd how many Olympics did you cover? I covered eight. Eight Olympics and all those years on Monday Night uh, on World um, Championships, World Wide World of Sports. World Sports. The well, men, the men in your your fans came out of the woodwork to pretty much tell her, Google it and don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> One guy at a party recently yeah. did say to Frank, uh, "So you played football or something?" Ooh. <laughs> anyway, Frank's going to be with us the whole hour. Heather, sweetheart, please. And uh, we have a fun day. We're going to be right back. We got so much, so much. Oh, oi, help me, Lord. Okay, <laughs> Heather. <laughs> Hello today fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives.